The content of this podcast is provided for general informational purposes only and is not intended as, nor should it be considered a substitute for professional medical advice. Sweaty and pissed, sweaty and pissed, menopause makes me sweaty and pissed. Hello, sweaty and pissed listeners. This is Karen Nickel, nurse practitioner, in to talk to you today about estrogen dominance. This is something we talked about in one of our really early episodes, and I'm continuing to get questions about it. So I thought I'd refresh everyone's memory, or if you haven't heard that uh, episode from long ago, you might be interested in hearing about this pretty common problem. So what is estrogen dominance? It's when there's too much estrogen in your body relative to the amount of progesterone we have. Premenopausal and perimenopausal women can develop this imbalance in several different ways, and ovulatory cycles can lead to estrogen dominance. This is when we don't ovulate during a cycle. After we ovulate, a mini organ called the corpus luteum forms at the site of ovulation, and that mini organ secretes progesterone. So if you do not ovulate, you do not make progesterone that month. This commonly happens in perimenopausal women and in women with polycystic ovarian syndrome. Another thing that causes estrogen dominance is excess body fat. Our fat cells produce estrogen. So the more fat we have, the more estrogen we produce. Chronic stress is another cause. Um, This can cause increased cortisol secretion when we have chronic stress because that is our chronic stress hormone. And that comes from the adrenal gland. And when that happens, it leads to hormone imbalances. When we have a diet that is low in fiber or high in refined carbohydrates, or a diet that is low in high quality nutritious foods like fresh fruits, fresh vegetables, and good fats from things like nuts and avocado. Poor immune function is also a cause. Supporting your immune system is very important for this and for many other reasons. I have done a podcast on recommending immune support supplements to take, especially during the COVID-19 pandemic. And that list of supplements can be found on our website, sweatyandpiss.com in the blog portion at the bottom of the page. So if you want that list of supplements, it is there for you, including dosing and um, some suggested brands to purchase. Other things like environmental agents can cause problems. Things like mineral oils or petroleum products that can act like estrogen in our body. So if you're using topical skin or hair care products that contain mineral oils or petroleum products. And it will say on the list of ingredients, mineral oils or petroleum um, or petrolatum. So if it contains those ingredients, those ingredients act like estrogens in our body once they're absorbed into our body from our skin or scalp. We call those substances that act like estrogens, we call them xenoestrogens. So avoiding those substances is very important in preventing extra estrogen in your body. Hormonal contraception that contains estrogen and progestin can cause estrogen dominance because you're getting large amounts of estrogen, enough estrogen to shut down your ovaries, and it's combined with progestin to thin the lining of our uterus, and progestin which is synthetic, does not do for us what our natural progesterone does. And so we don't have that good progesterone benefit uh, when we're taking birth control pills. So some people have a lot of estrogen dominant symptoms when they are on hormonal contraception. Even when you're menopausal and no longer making any estrogen from the ovaries or your ovaries have been removed, you can become estrogen dominant because women can still get estrogen from fat cells, from meat and dairy products, and from using mineral oil products. Also, we are no longer ovulating in menopause, and we so we make no progesterone. 
Also, many, many women are on estrogen-only hormone replacement therapy. One of the actions of progesterone is to thin the lining of the uterus. So if a woman has had a hysterectomy, she is typically given estrogen-only hormone replacement therapy because there is no longer a, a concern about the possibility of thickening of the uterine lining. The problem with this approach is that you're getting estrogen and no progesterone, and that is what causes estrogen dominance. So even in my women who have had hysterectomies, I give them progesterone because I'm hopefully treating their entire body and not just their uterus or the lack of a uterus. So Um, progesterone is very, very important. And there are many, many, many women out there who are not getting progesterone because they no longer have a uterus. Right now, we'll take a brief break and I will be back to discuss all the symptoms of estrogen dominance. So what are the symptoms of estrogen dominance? I know you're dying to know. Um, there are a lot of them, and uh, you might have many if you are don't have a balanced hormone regimen. Um, bloating is a big one. Bloating and feeling puffy, swelling and tenderness in your breasts, fibrocystic breasts, decreased sex drive, irregular periods, increased PMS symptoms, mood swings, increase in headaches, anxiety and panic attacks, weight gain around the hips and waist especially, hair loss, cold hands or feet, insomnia, fatigue, memory problems or foggy thinking, and sluggish metabolism. We often have low thyroid type symptoms when we are estrogen dominant, because when we have a lot of estrogen, our bodies make more of a protein called thyroid binding globulin. And that protein binds to our thyroid hormones. And when our hormones are bound to protein, we cannot use them. We can all, our body can only use hormones that are unbound So when we have more protein-bound thyroid hormone, we have less thyroid hormone available for us to use, and we get low thyroid symptoms like cold hands and feet and fatigue and weight gain and foggy thinking. Men can get estrogen dominance as well, and some of their symptoms include infertility. Um, Estrogen is partly responsible for creating healthy sperm. So when estrogen levels are high, sperm levels may fall and lead to fertility issues. We can also develop gynecomastia, that means enlarged breasts. Um, Estrogen stimulates breast tissue growth, and men with too much estrogen may develop gynecomastia. A third symptom is erectile dysfunction. Uh, Men with high levels of estrogen may have difficulty getting or maintaining an erection. So it's important for men to address that problem as well. Some ways to reverse or prevent estrogen dominance include first, increasing exercise, which promotes hormone balance and reduces body fat. Eat nutritious foods like fresh fruits and vegetables and good fats. Also increase fiber in your diet. Adequate fiber in your diet allows for improved elimination of stool. Estrogen is excreted by the bowel, so if stool remains in the bowel, estrogen will be reabsorbed into the body. Reduce your stress, and I know this is a tough one. I know it's I know it is not an easy task. But as we approach the new year, maybe look to invest some time and energy in yourself and in your wellness. It's so important. Avoid use of mineral oils and petroleum products in your hair care or skin care. Again, xenoestrogens can be leached into your food if you heat it, heat your food in plastic containers in the microwave, for instance. 
Uh, this can also happen when light filters through plastic water bottles. So use stainless steel water bottle instead of a clear plastic bottle to avoid the leaching of xenoestrogens into the water you're drinking. Consider adding over-the-counter supplements like DIM, D is in dog, I, M is in Mary, DIM, which aids in hormone balance by supporting the body's metabolism of excess estrogen. Detoxify the liver. The liver is our body's filter and filters out extra estrogen. So keeping this organ healthy by limiting alcohol and avoiding high fat foods is so important. Over-the-counter milk thistle caps can also aid in supporting a healthy liver. And consider starting a bioidentical hormone regimen that includes progesterone. It's so important to have a balanced regimen where you're balancing estrogen and progesterone to avoid estrogen dominance. As with other podcasts, I will put this information in the blog portion of our website, sweatyandpiss.com. Sweaty and Piss is uh, with and spelled out. And I will have uh, some supplement information on there and um, ways to find a practitioner can, who can help you with a balanced hormone regimen if hormone replacement is something you desire and is appropriate for you. So I hope this has helped with uh, your knowledge of estrogen dominance. And I know there are many, many women out there who are dealing with these symptoms. And there are things you can do besides having hormone replacement. So you can really balance your estrogen and progesterone in order to feel your best. I want to thank Forrest Winsel for producing our episode today and Stephen Brown for our artwork. And I hope you all stay well, stay safe, and we will see you next week. Sweet.